it's hard not to hug my brother, but uh, I will uh, follow the rules as they are printed. Amen. Amen. So glad that you guys have chosen to come to worship here today. Thank you for embracing me as your brother from another mother, but we all have the same father. Amen. And uh, looking forward to sharing God's word with you all today. If you have your Bibles with you, please join me in the book of Philippians chapter 4. We're going to start at verses uh, 5b through 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 5b through 7. I believe that the Lord has sent me here on assignment today to declare his word in your hearing. And I pray that as the word of the Lord is being spoken to you today, that you will find hope, that you will find encouragement, that you will find strength to face life as God has given you the gift of today. I just want to remind you every day that you wake up and you're on this side of the dirt, it is a gift from God as he is still choosing to include you in his plans and his purposes for today in our generation, in our world. And to me, guys, that is a big deal. It's not that he didn't think less of anybody else who he called home to be with him. Their assignment was up. But we are still on assignment for the Lord. We are on mission to do the great commission that Jesus Christ has given each and every one of us. And I take this moment seriously as an honor from God to be with you guys today. So thank you for the privilege of being able to stand in this sacred pulpit and to be able to minister to you the word of God. Thank you, my brother, for having me today. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verses 5b through 7. The word of the Lord reads, the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We live in a world that is driven by fear. If you think about it, everybody's afraid of something. Fear comes and visits us each and every single day. If you are a parent, there is a fear that lies in the back of your mind as you say goodbye to your children as you drop them off at school or if they're grown adults and they've moved out of your house, out of your protection, out from your provision, there's a certain fear that resides in us because no parent wants to bury their children. Amen. We all hope and pray that the Lord will take us home first. We all deal with fear. But if you're a child, there is a fear that eventually sets into you as you become a little older. Every year you get older, there's one common denominator, and that is as you get older, so do your parents. And oftentimes, your parents become like your children. And so there is a fear in you that the Lord will sooner than later will call your parents home. They have less days ahead of them than they had behind them. It is a fear that I grapple with and deal with in my life that sooner or later, either the Lord is going to call me home first and leave my parents with a broken heart, or he's going to call my parents home and leave me with a broken heart. I remember this past Christmas break, I went down to Texas to spend some time with my parents. Uh, my biological father, I was raised by my mother and stepfather, but my biological father's health was rapidly declining. So we made a decision to go to Houston and spend some time with him. By the time I got to Houston, he was in hospice already, and he had lost consciousness. So he was out of consciousness. And I sat by the bedside, realized the gravity of the situation, and realized that the moments were leaving that me and him would have together. And so Christmas Eve, I went by the hospice house and spent time with them by the bedside. There were some visitors that come in, and I just began to entertain them and talk with them. They had a wonderful conversation. They love my biological father. And as I am spending time with them and they have left, the Lord just kind of gave it to me. This is probably the end of the road for you, buddy. 
And so I began to talk to my father, even though he could not open his eyes and recognize me. I began to tell him, Dad, you've been on this journey for a long time. And I know that you are tired. I know that you want to stay here for me and, and the rest of your children and your wife, but Dad, I know you're ready to go home. And, and, and Dad, I forgive you for anything that you've ever done to me. Uh, God, Dad, I, I set you free. I release you. And, and I want you to go home and be with the Lord. I love you. And, and I remember in that moment, my dad's eyes begin to move behind his eyelids. I had seen that the whole time I was there. His eyes begin to move behind his eyelids. It was almost that God was giving me a special moment to say, he heard your voice. Yeah. Amen. The next day, I get a phone call from my older brother. And as I answer the phone, he's in tears. And I said, Dad went home to be with the Lord, didn't he? And he said, yes. And I said, I'll be right there. And I'll never forget my wife looking at me. She said, you, you get ready to go into the hospice home? And I said, yes. Do you want me to come? And, and I was like, well, you don't really have to. If you, you, you don't have to go and be. And she was like, I'm coming. And, and so she jumps in the car with me. I'm racing across Houston to go to the hospice home. And I pull up and I rounded the corner when I walked into the house. And, and there I see down the small hallway my dad lifeless in the bed. And I drop to my knees and I begin to cry in a way that I've never cried in my life. To give you context, I discovered who my biological father was at the age of 32. I am now 41 years old. And I began to cry out of the depths of my heart, out of the depths of my soul. Everything in me hurt that moment. And as I cried and cried and cried, my wife tried to comfort me. My brother tried to comfort me. And the tears just kept streaming down my face. And finally, when I got done crying in that moment and said goodbye to my dad as the coroner came and rolled him out of the house, and I'm still weeping. And, and later on in the parking lot, I'm talking to my step-siblings. And, and they're telling me, they said, wow, whatever you were trying to work out of you, came out in that moment. Whatever you were feeling and grappling with came out in that moment. You let it all go. You left it in the hallway. And I, I remember driving away saying to my wife, boy, if I took it that hard, I can't imagine how hard it would be if my parents who raised me would have passed away. I don't know how I will handle that. We all deal with fear. There are anxieties that are in our lives that if we're not careful, can affect everything that we say and that we do and how we interact in this world. So how do we handle the fear and the anxieties that come in this life? With the coronavirus, there is fear and anxiety all over the place. Right. And it doesn't help that every time you turn on the news, you're seeing some type of expert, quote unquote, getting on the TV, scaring you to death. You are afraid to even get out of the bed. Because if you step on the floor, coronavirus may have creeped into your house during the middle of the night. And you just <laughs> might get sick. There is so much fear in the world and in our society. Does the Lord have an answer for us yeah. today? Yeah. And I believe so. If you will just give me just a few more minutes. I know I'm giving a long introduction, but brothers from another mother that are of my color tend to be a little long-winded. But I will try my best not to be that today. Amen? There are a few things that I believe that the text is teaching us today that will help you if you are grappled and gripped with fear and anxiety today. I want you to walk out of here set free today. Amen. From every fear Amen. and every anxiety that will rob you of the life to the fullest that Jesus Christ died for. Y'all ready for this? A few yeah. points and I will get out of your way today. <laughs> Number one, the Lord is near. 
The Lord is near. I love how the text opens in verse 5b. He says, the Lord is at hand. If you look that up in the original language, it means literally the Lord is nearby. He is not distant. He's not far. He hasn't gone on a long journey. The Lord is near. I want you to think about it like this. If you are ever out in the wilderness and you stumble upon some bear cubs, wisdom should teach you that if you see bear cubs, you might want to get away. Why? Because mama bear is always near. near. Mama bear ain't far from the bear cubs. And if the bear cubs cry out in distress, you are in big time trouble. Because when Mama Bear shows up on the scene, she's coming to wreck and damage and destroy anything that would cause her cubs to cry out in despair and in fear. All I am saying to you today is that we have a God who is like a Mama Bear that is never far away from us. He is always near. He is nearby. And when we cry out to our Father, He hears our voice and He comes to the rescue. And I'm here to tell you, any fear, any anxiety, any demon from hell that may be troubling you, that may be causing you to be in distress, they better hide tell it out of there because when God shows up, He comes to handle business. I'm just saying, the Lord is near. We have no reason to fear anything in this life because our God is our constant companion. Amen. He will never leave us right. nor forsake us. He will be with us even until the end of the age. We're safe. Come We're on. secure. There's right. something about those bear cubs yeah. when they're out there in the wild and they're just walking around. They have no worries in the world and if they happen to get frightened, all they got to do in their bear language is cry out, and help comes right. right away. I just wonder if you would make a daily habit and practice when that fear begins to sneak up, when that anxiety begins to grip you, when, when you begin to struggle with some things, if you would just call out, help, Come on. your daddy will show up. It ain't nothing like it when daddy shows up. I'm just telling you, when daddy shows up, that means he came to handle business. When I was in high school, I had a friend of mine, a girl, and we were very close, and she liked me and I liked her, but I just wouldn't date her, but we could hang out. And I went to her softball game to sing the national anthem at the school. And when I was at the softball game, I sang the national anthem, I was there to support her and cheer her on in her softball season. Her father walks up to me and says, hey, can I have a conversation with you? I said, yes, sir, being polite as I was. And I went out to the parking lot to have a conversation with him. He gets up in my face and threatens me and says to me, if you have any intentions of dating my daughter or doing anything with her, I'm just going to let you know you will get hurt. <laughs> and I'm like, he's a good dad. But let me warn you, sir. I said, I respect you. And I appreciate what you're telling me. I just want to let you know that me and your daughter are just friends, and that's all the intentions I have for her. I respect her, and I respect you. But here's something that you don't know that you might need to be reminded of. Just like you are a good daddy to her, I've got a good daddy too. And my good daddy would not appreciate you being up in my face and threatening me. So unless you don't want to meet my good daddy on bad terms, you might want to get out of my face and stop talking to me like I am a fatherless child. We are not fatherless children in the house today. We have a good daddy who will fight for us and will defend us even in the face of fear and Inside. Do I have a witness today? Yeah, 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 great. But then the text goes on beyond the fact that the Lord is near, that he's at hand, he's nearby. It tells us, so don't worry. Don't be anxious for anything. Man. I loved a song back in the day. There was a great musician by the name of 
Bobby McFerrin, many of y'all have heard that name. But he sang the song and he said, here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. In every life we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. So don't worry. Be happy. And then in his happiness, he says, Heavenly 
Father. So pray sincerely. So when you pray in this season, which we should be doing, we should not only pray for ourselves, but we should pray for those who have been impacted by the virus. We should also pray for those whose families have been impacted by the virus. Maybe a loved one has lost their lives to the virus, which means there are families and friends and people groups that are suffering with loss right now. Right. So we should be sincerely praying for those who may be victims of this virus. Supplication. He said we should include supplication into our daily routine with the Lord. Watch this. Supplication is the action of asking or begging for something. Watch this. Earnestly or humbly. So we should be seeking the face of God in a manner that shows that we are crying out to him in desperation. When's the last time you desperately prayed for someone or something to happen in your life? When is the last time that you begged God to move on your behalf or the behalf of someone else, even on the behalf of your church? When is the last time you begged God for revival in your community, Amen. revival in your home, revival in your workplace, revival in the schoolhouse, revival in the courthouse, revival in the jailhouse, revival in the White House? When is the last time you earnestly seek God and begged Him to move? Come on, come on. I love this coronavirus, and let me tell you why I love it. <laughs> Many churches have closed the doors in terms of their live services. Now, I want to emphasize this point. We have not canceled church. Amen. We have not closed the church. That is impossible. Because the church is not a set of buildings. That's right. It is not your utilities. It is not the land that you sit on. The church is living and breathing, yeah. and the church is you and I yeah. if we have placed our faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not closed. We're not done. We're not finished, but we are creative. Yeah, come on. We are creative in the fact that we have a creator God who created us, made the world. He is extremely creative. How so, Pastor Z? Glad you asked that. Y'all asked so many great questions. Yeah. Thank you for being such a wonderful congregation that makes it easy to preach to you. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says to us, In the beginning, God created. Now, God could have introduced himself to us in any manner, shape, or form. He could have given any of his attributes to us right off the first words of the page. But for some reason, he wanted to introduce to us to the creative nature of who he is. That's right. He says, I'm not just God. I am creator God. That's right. And the Bible goes on to say that we were made in his image. The Bible says, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let us Made man. So he created them, male and female. Amen. And so God creates us in his image, which means inherently from the day we were born, we were born as created beings yes. who came through a creative process in order for us to get here. And that process was created by a creative God. Right. In other words, when you have children, you can set them in a room, and they may have toys, or they may not have toys, but they can entertain themselves Come because on. they are extremely creative. That's right. If you've ever been into a place in the world or in your society where a people group doesn't have much, you will see creativity at an all-time high. It's amazing how creative people can be when they're down to nothing. And the thing I love about children is how creative they are, but what hurts me is society begins to box them in. Schools begin to condition them, and you start to see that creativity start to wane off. By the time we become adults, we're like robots walking around trying to figure out life when God has made us to be creative. So this is what our present situation has done to the church. It has made the church to stop thinking about brick and mortar. Come on. 
and start thinking about creative ways to get the gospel out into the community. Amen. And a lot of churches, what the coronavirus has done, has driven those people back to their homes, and now they are having church in their own homes, being live streamed, being Bible studies, be, via however they meet during the week, they are starting to be the church. Come on. I think this is a gift to Come us. On. I think the Lord is getting our attention and is saying it is time to quit playing the church Come and on. actually be the church. Come it on. is time for you to get out into the community and start reaching people for the gospel of Jesus Christ because every time we turn around, somebody is dying Come on. and are far from God. Come on. So what are we going to do? How creative can we be in this day and age? If the Lord says to us, you have to close your doors, you can't meet anymore during the week, you're going to have to go online, what are we going to do? Come on. I'll tell you one of the things I can't wait to do once I get done preaching today is I look forward to going on Facebook and inviting all my friends to tune in to what I have to say. Because I believe the gospel matters and yeah. people matter to God, so I just simply want to connect Amen. the two. Amen. 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 So he says, pray, supplication, and I love this, thanksgiving. When's the last time you just said, thank you, God? Yeah. When's the last time, for no reason, you just said, you know what, thank you? Amen. I, I love it when I do something for my kids and I forgot that I did something for them and we're on the way back to the house and I'm, I'm thinking of the next thing I've got to do and then all of a sudden from the back seat I hear this, thank you, Dad. And I'm like, yeah, I did just do something for you, didn't I? That, that's pretty nice. You're welcome, baby girl. Amen. Or my son will say, hey, Dad, thanks. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I just, yeah, I just did something for you. Could you imagine if God's children were so in love with them and so thankful for what God has done for them that every time they turn around, they can't help but to thank God? Come on. Could you imagine God getting thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all day long? Oh my gosh, wow, this is great. This is overwhelming. My children appreciate their father. Come on, man. Have you ever been as a parent in a moment where you felt unappreciated? Come on. Where, where, where you felt like they didn't care. Like you give and you give and you pour out and you pour out and you do for them. You use all your gas money on your kids because every time you turn around they got a different event that they've got to go to and, and their school is asking you for money for things that they should be paying for and all this stuff and then they get a job but they don't have a car and you got to drop them off and pick them up and, and they want to go hang out with their friends but they don't have a car so you got to drop them off and pick them up and then when you get them a car you got to pay for insurance that's astronomical and pray that they don't get the wreck so your insurance rates don't go through the roof and so you're spending all this money on your children and sometimes they just take it for granted. Come on, man. But when that one child comes back and says, you know what? I was just thinking about something. I've got really good parents. Man. Thank you. You know, Dad, my, my friends do crazy stuff all the time and they're always getting in trouble and you know, they, I've got a lot of friends that have single parent households but Dad, thank you. You know, most of, the, most of my friends don't even have fathers in their lives, but Dad, I do. Thank Amen. you. Amen. God wants to hear your voice. Amen. He's right. a good father. That's right. And he is an emotional God. Come on. He has real feelings. That's right. He's not this spiritual being that is just void of feelings. God has feelings. That's right. oh, and his heart breaks. But his heart also rejoices. That's right. Yeah. And I want to encourage you to get in the habit of daily. If, if for no other reason when you wake up and you stand in front of that mirror and, and you're just looking at the mirror saying, oh, I don't want to be up this time in the morning. Instead of complaining, just say, you know what? Thank you, God. That's right. That's right. I got to see the day. Thank you. Amen. When my kids come home from school, I'm saying to God, thank you. Amen. Nobody walked into their school and shot it up. Amen. Thank you yeah. for bringing my kids home 
one more day. God, when we lay our heads on the pillow at night, all of us were in a secure location. My kids were safe. Thank you. When I woke up this morning and I was getting ready to leave the house, I, I kissed my baby girl before I left, and I kissed my wife, I don't kiss my son because that's just weird, but uh, I, I, I kissed the two girls in the house, and I walked out the door, and I just thought to myself, thank you. None of them were cold when I kissed them. Amen. They were still warm. Amen. Thank you. Let's begin to thank God in our lives. Yes. And here's what God promises us. It's the last part. God will do his part. If we will do our part, God will do his part. Look at what the text says here at the end in verse number 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Amen. will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, God has promised you ridiculous peace. Would you just say that real quick? Ridiculous, ridiculous peace. peace. One more time. Ridiculous, ridiculous peace. That means this peace is so ridiculous it don't make any sense. Come on. It Come surpasses on. all understanding. Yeah. It's that kind of peace that you feel stupid because you shouldn't have that kind of peace because your situation is so messed up, so jacked up, it should have you under a table crying for your mama. <laughs> That he will give us peace that is ridiculous uh, and it will guard our hearts yes. and our wow. minds in Christ Jesus. In yes. other words, he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on yeah. him. Yeah. So God promises us to protect our hearts yeah. and our minds no matter the circumstance or the situation. If we will do our part. God will do his part yes. to give us ridiculous peace Amen. so that way we can handle any trial, any storm, any adversity that may come our way. I wonder if you're experiencing the ridiculous peace of God. I wonder uh, if peace is so ridiculous in your life that your friends and your family look at you and they say, I don't even understand that fool. I don't understand why he is so cool, calm, and collected when everything is falling around in his life. How in the world is he able to keep going? How in the world does he keep coming back for more? You would think if you get your butt kicked, you would just stay down, but he keeps getting up and he just says, give me some more. Come on, bring it on. How is it that he can do that? It's because God has given him or her the peace that surpasses all understanding yes. because they're not afraid of anything. Amen. How can we get there? The Lord is near. Yes. He makes us easy, guys. Yeah. He makes it so easy. Hallelujah. He says, hey, look, you ain't got a trip. I'm, I'm right here. Come on. I'm right here. As a matter of fact, it's like a little child. And you're teaching the child how to walk. And the child starts taking those steps, but the child's looking for something to hold on to. And you place the child somewhere where they can't hold on to nothing. And you get them going, you kind of grab their hands, and you get them going, and, and, they, and they're getting their balance there. And, and, and then as they continue to take steps, you let their hands go slowly, and you start taking steps backwards. And you say, come on, yeah. come, on. come on, keep coming, come to dad. I got you. Come on. And you can see, they're just reaching out because they're, they're looking for their safety. They're looking for their security. Yeah. And they're reaching out, but they're, they're taking those steps. And as they keep taking steps, you keep, yeah, you got it. Yeah. You're doing it. Come on, man. Come on. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And they keep walking to you. And then when they get to you, they're like a few steps away from you. And what do they normally do? They run or they dive into your arms. <laughs> and I can just see God with us. Come on. In our circumstances, in our trials, when we're anxious and we're fearful, he said, come on. Come on, baby. Come on. I got you. Daddy's right here. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to let you fall. If you fall, I'm going to pick you up. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. And we finally get close to God and we just jump into his arms and he picks Amen. us up and he celebrates us. Amen. And he says, like, see, that wasn't so bad, was it? Come on. And you're like, no. And then God puts us back down. He said, let's do this again. So I'm training you so you can walk. I'm training you. Yeah. So you can go forth in my name. I'm training you so you can reach people. I'm training you because there are others who need to be able to learn 
how to walk because right now they're crawling through life. Come on. But I want them to walk. And I need you to teach them how to walk. I need you to teach them how to put their hands in the master's hands yeah. so I can guide them. Amen. Are you available during this season of anxiety and fear for the Lord to effectively use you? Come on. I am glad I'm alive in this day. Amen. I am glad that the Lord has me here. Amen. I am glad that we have a nation where our president's first thought is to call us to prayer. Come on. Amen. I am glad that we as Christians have a God that can answer every prayer that we pray up. Right. I am thankful that we have no need to fear. Amen. But we have every reason to trust Amen. in our God yes. who is faithful. And the Bible says his faithfulness endures throughout all generations. Right. We are a generation of faithfulness. Is there anything too hard for our God? No. no. Certainly not. God can do anything. Amen. Will you let him do anything through you? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I do thank you that you have power over all things. There is nothing that can match you in your strength, in your wisdom, in your power, in your provision, in your protection, in your healing. Now there is no one like you, nothing like you in all creation. You reign supreme. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that anybody under the sound of my voice that is in this room now or they're watching live would be set free from fear and anxiety. God, as we are living in the day of COVID-19, the coronavirus, God, we live with the knowledge that you are more powerful than any virus that will ever hit this earth. And that healing is in your wings. And that God, you have the ability to speak to COVID-19 and cause it to go away. Amen. God, you have the ability to do anything. And so, Father, we realize that you are near and you command us not to be anxious. And so, Father, set us free from anxiety. God, we lift up our prayers to you today. God, we lift up our supplications to you today, God. There are people dying all over the world. There are governments in chaos right now. There are markets that are plunging right now. There are people whose way of life is threatened right now. There are hourly wage workers that will be out of work if employers don't do right by them. And so, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus for the welfare of our nation and the welfare of our world. God, would you intervene Amen. and do what only you can do. God, for those of us who are stricken by fear, God, would you free us from anxiety? Because, God, our lives are truly in your hands. And, God, you knew the end from the beginning. God, you know our birth date and our death dates. Help us to not walk through this life in fear, but help us to walk through this life in victory. Father, I pray for this church today, God. I pray that they would find creative ways to share the love, the light, and the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ to a dying world that needs you. God, give them the resources. Give them the ability to spread the gospel. Father, thank you for the leadership here. God, thank you for their wisdom and their steps and the measures that they've taken. God, I pray that you would honor them. Continue to bless them. And then, Father, we pray for those all over the world that have already lost loved ones to this virus, that have been significantly infected, affected and impacted. God, for those that are stranded in countries that they can't get back from, God, we pray that you would help those people. 
God, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon this earth, God. That you would blanket this place and that revival would break out everywhere because the church yes. has now gone from the four walls into the community. Would you do that, God? Help us to be who you died for. And then, God, lastly, we say thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this situation where the church can stand up victoriously and proclaim there is one who can deliver from anything. And his name is Jesus. And God, we thank you for peace that is absolutely, unequivocally, unashamedly, straight up ridiculous. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that prayer, please indicate by saying, Amen. Amen. Amen.